Hey guys, Josh from Next Academy here. I want to show you how you can install Python on your Windows PC by first installing a Windows subsystem for Linux. Now, there are many ways you can install Python on a Windows PC. However, historically, Windows OS has not always been the best operating system when working with C libraries or certain Python libraries. So in my opinion, in 2020, if you're using Windows 10, the best solution is to run Windows subsystem for Linux. In other words, you get a Linux environment running and you would be able to execute commands in say, you know, uh, a Linux distro of your choice, for example, Ubuntu and stuff like that. If you don't understand what I just said, don't worry about it. Uh, we'll walk through step by step on how to get started. So first of all, we'll go to this Microsoft documentation, right? I'll link this in the description box below. All right, we'll get to step one. Step one is to enable Windows subsystem for Linux and they're asking you to open up PowerShell as an administrator. So first of all, we'll search for PowerShell and remember to run it as an administrator. All right, after that, we'll copy this command uh, that, Mike, that is, that is uh, given to us in the documentation, paste and hit enter. All right, and once it's done, uh, we recommend now moving on to step two, updating to WSL2. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead with this. Uh, there are several uh, advantages to using WSL2 over WSL1. What is important for you to know is that WSL2 is gonna produce a better um, experience because it's gonna be a lot faster. Now, before we go ahead, we just need to make sure that we are running um, version 1903 or built uh, with a with build number uh, 18362 or higher if you are using uh, x64 system. So if you have a Intel processor or AMD processor, most likely you're going to be on an x64 system. If you have a ARM-based processor, then you just want to make sure that the version of Windows you have is that. Now, to check your version and build number, uh, select Windows logo key on your keyboard plus R, and then uh, search for Vinver, so Windows version. Um, and you can see right here, we have a version of 1909, which is much greater than 1903 and a build number much higher than 18362. Uh, so with that, we are all good for WSL2. Now, if your version number or your build number is lower than this, then you probably want to first update your uh, Windows operating system. Okay, uh, once you have that done, we've got to enable the virtual machine feature. Okay, uh, so once again, we'll copy the command, uh, go back to PowerShell and Control V to paste and hit enter. All right, now that this is done, restart your machine to complete the WSL install and update to WSL2. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right, so I've restarted my computer and I can move on to step four, which is to download the latest package. I'll just click on the link. All right, it's down downloading uh, the Linux kernel update package. Uh, once it's done, just double click it. All right, go ahead with the installation process. All right, and once it's done, we'll have to set up WSL2 as our default version. All right, so to do that, you know, once again, open up PowerShell and remember to uh, open it up as a administrator, right? So run as administrator. And from here, we'll just copy the command again, go back to PowerShell, control V to paste. And all right, so now by default, we're gonna be using WSL2 rather than WSL1, which once again is a lot more performant than WSL1. All right, now step six, install your Linux distribution of choice. Uh, so let's go to Microsoft Store. 
uh, how do I get there? Open it up. Oh, that's not good. Okay, uh, search, what are we searching for? Uh, Linux distribution of your choice. Now, Linux has many different distros. Uh, what I would recommend for you guys to do is to install uh, Ubuntu. I think it's one of the sort of friendliest and widely supported uh, distros. There are many other distros that you can choose from. So if you know what you're doing, go ahead and search for your own distro of choice. Otherwise, go ahead with Ubuntu and select the latest with an LTS behind. So in this case, uh, filming on the 9th of October 2020, Ubuntu 20.04 is uh, the latest version. All right, go ahead, click get. Uh, well, we've got to sign in uh, to your Microsoft account. Okay, so I have went ahead and signed into my Microsoft account behind the scenes. Uh, now I can go ahead and install Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. Once again, the version depends on when you're following, when you're installing this. Um, hmm, what's happening? Okay, it's downloading. Uh, so once it's done, all right, we'll launch. And there we go. We have Ubuntu 20.04 LTS installed. Now, huh, something went wrong. Okay, guys. Uh, so off camera, I have went ahead and figured out what was wrong. If you're getting the same error message as I did just before, um, I Googled and found the solution. So the error code was exactly the same. And what I realized was you, uh, so I'm on my gaming PC, right? This is a PC that I built myself. When I was doing the installation on my um, Windows laptop, I had no such issues. Uh, but now when I'm using my desktop gaming PC, you know, I had some issues. I had to go to the BIOS setting. Uh, so if you're not familiar with it, um, unfortunately, you're gonna have to do some research on that. But essentially, you're, you're gonna have to shut down your computer, get into your motherboard's BIOS menu and enable virtualization. So if you are using a Intel processor, so you have an Intel-based motherboard, you wanna activate uh, Intel virtualization technology, or if you're using AMD, um, I, I don't have an AMD machine to confirm this, but it seems like you know these are the steps. So advanced CPU configuration, you gotta enable SVM. I have no idea what SVM stands for, once again, I don't use an AMD system, uh, but this is what you gotta do. And once you restart your computer, uh, go ahead to the search bar, search for Ubuntu, right? And just open it up and the installation um, should go as what we expect uh, it to do. So right now we just gotta set up the new distribution. Uh, where was it? Here. So you gotta enter a Unix uh, username. I'm just gonna give it a name and you gotta put in a password, right? Uh, so I'm gonna give it my password. Uh, you're not gonna see anything being uh, being shown on screen as you type, uh, but just go ahead and type and confirm the password. That's fine. Uh, there you have it. So right now, any commands that we type right here, we are running it on a Ubuntu machine, right? So this is a virtualized machine that is running on your Windows PC. Everything that is being executed on here is really uh, executed on a Ubuntu system. Um, all right. Uh, so you should be able to run all your typical, you know, Ubuntu commands. Uh, I think by default, we don't have Python installed. So here is where we've got to start installing uh, Python. Um, so once again, you know, there are many, many different ways to install Python, you know, from this step onwards. Um, because we are on a development machine, I like to use a software called um, ASDF. Um, so go ahead, you know, github.com ASDF. Uh, ASDF is essentially a, 
manager for you know multiple versions of a particular programming language or multiple you know different programming languages so you can use this to install ruby python node elixir erlang and and a whole bunch of other uh, programming languages um, but for this video we are only interested in python so we'll go ahead and get started with installing asdf uh, first so click on getting started uh, give it a second to load it's taking some time okay uh, but yeah so here we have it uh, we'll go ahead and install asdf um, I think we'll just go with the default so copy the clipboard uh, go back to your Ubuntu terminal, right? So we are no longer using PowerShell. We're using the Ubuntu terminal. If you don't have this window, go ahead to search and search for Ubuntu and just double click on that. can type. Uh, but yeah, just go ahead, you know, click on this and you should be able to run the command uh, as given to you. Uh, okay, uh, so because we are running this command as sudo, remember you set your password much earlier. So now you've got to, it's prompting you for your password. So just go ahead and type your password. Uh, all right, so we've got the stuff, the, some of the necessary stuff uh, installed, uh, the prerequisite uh, libraries. Okay, um, okay, we're just gonna use the latest branch. Uh, once again, control V, wait, control V doesn't seem to work. Okay, uh, all you have to do is like click both your left and right mouse button at the same time and you would be able to paste. Um, okay, I guess that was pretty much the inst installation process. So there are a couple of things left that you need to do. Uh, first of all is to copy this line uh, into bash RC. Uh, so click copy to clipboard, go back to your Ubuntu terminal and um, well, I typically use Vim, uh, but for simplicity's sake, we'll use Nano. Uh, so we'll open up Bash RC using Nano. So Nano is a text editor in, you know, the terminal itself. It looks pretty intimidating, but you know, it's really not. Um, so we're just going to paste uh, what we, okay, okay, to paste here, control V, I suppose. Hmm. How do I paste? Okay, uh, uh, strangely enough, in order for you to paste, you just have to like right click, right click, is it right click? Right click your mouse. Either that or my computer is lagging a lot. So uh, give it a try guys, both the left and right mouse button or just the right button. Okay, uh, we're not done yet. Uh, completions must be configured. You know, what, I'm gonna skip this step for now. All right, and Control X to exit and type Y to save. Enter. All right, so now we've just got to restart our shell. Um, so there are many different ways for you to restart. I I guess you know the simplest way is just to exit and just open again why is my computer acting up okay um so i think we should have asdf installed okay uh so go ahead and type asdf you should see you know this bunch of things being printed out on the screen if you see it you have successfully installed asdf okay guys uh once you have asdf installed the next thing you want to do is to install the ASDF Python uh, plugin. So go ahead on ASDF's uh, website, click on all plugins and search for Python. Where is Python? Okay, yeah, just click on the link. It'll bring you over to a GitHub uh, link and go ahead and install Python by copying this and running it in your uh, Ubuntu terminal. Uh, so if you don't have it open, you know, just go ahead and do it. Uh, okay. But basically I've done this off camera. You should be able to install this fairly smoothly. And once you have this installed, we still do not yet have Python installed. We only have the ASDF Python plugin installed. So the next thing to do would be to install Python. 
However, before we go ahead and install Python, we're going to have to install some system dependency. In this case, we're using Ubuntu. If you installed a different Linux distro, then um, you know, uh, follow accordingly, right? SanOS, Fedora, and stuff like that. So we have Ubuntu. Um, so copy. Uh, oh, so off camera, I figured out how to copy and paste properly in this Ubuntu terminal. Uh, so I found this on Stack Overflow. What you've got to do is to, uh, well, in your Ubuntu terminal, right click, click on properties, and make sure that use control shift C or V as copy and paste is checked. Uh, then click OK. And now you will be able to paste things by doing uh, control shift V, right? Uh, so you gotta install all the system libraries here before we install Python. Uh, this will take some time. I've already run this command, so it's very fast. So once libraries, uh, dependent system dependencies are installed, we can go ahead and try to install the latest version of Python. So the command is asdf install Python latest. All right, so this is gonna take some time and it will automatically look for the latest version of Python that is available. Uh, as of right now, you know, filming on the 9th of October, the latest version of Python is 3.9.0. Yours could be, you know, a bigger number than this, it's fine. Uh, go ahead and install the latest version of Python if you're learning Python the very first time. Um, if you're working on an existing Python project, then you would wanna check what you know, version of Python is used to build that project and then just, you know, type ASDF install Python, the version rather than latest, you would type something like 3.7.2 or something like that. Um, yeah, but if you're learning, you know, for the very first time, uh, just go ahead and type latest, it will automatically get the latest version of Python. And don't worry if you install the wrong version of Python, the whole point of ASDF is to allow you to install multiple version of Python on your computer. Okay, Python was installed successfully. Now, hopefully you don't get any error messages at up to this point, uh, but in my case, everything was smooth. I should be able to see Python um, available to me. So Python-V, okay. Um, that's fine. Uh, so we have to set the Python version that we want to use. So I'm going to type ASDF global Python 3.9.0. So what this does is every time you run the Python command, right? Um, you're going to be running Python 3.9.0. So in future, when you install new versions of Python, say for example, uh, let's say you install ASDF, install Python 3.7.2. You can also use that. You can also switch the global version of Python that is being used on your computer. Uh, but, you know, typically for me, what I do is I leave global as it is, right? And for every project itself, I have a file that specifies a version of Python I should be using. Um, so right now we can essentially write so right now we can essentially write any Python code. Uh, so I'll just test it out, you know. All right, perfect. 